What's up, Metalheads? My name is Jamie. This is the Blades and EDC channel, and today we are going to take a look at some crossbar lock knives. Uh, I think this is probably my favorite uh, type of locking system on a knife. Um, lots of companies are doing it now, but the OGs are bench made. Uh, their patent has ran out, so lots of other companies are starting to do these. And uh, so I want to show you some, and uh, I have lots of them here from different brands, and uh, talk a little bit about them and their action. The bug out action is just, it's amazing for a crossbar lock. Uh, this, you know, crossbar locks are not going to feel like a, uh, a regular detent with a detent ball. And, but when they're done right like this, they feel really good, in my opinion. And then you get some that just aren't done right. Um, so, first one you're seeing is the Benchmade bug out. This one has been customized with some uh, custom scale division, red dark matter scales, and some red thumb studs and standoffs. So. All right, which, where should we go next? Let's go the opposite end of the spectrum, more budget-friendly version of a crossbar lock. This is the Gonzo FB727S. This one's actually really good for the money. These are about $20 on Amazon. and uh, They're not bug-out good action, but they're really good action. A lot better than a lot of more expensive knives, I've felt. Um, and this is one you can get and beat on it, right? And not have to worry about destroying it. Um, another thing about the crossbar lock is this one the long the strongest locking systems out there for a knife. Um, the way it works, it, it locks that blade. It's not going to fail on you. You'd have to break that thick pin in there for it to uh, to fail, and uh, the odds of that happening are slim to none. So there's the Ganzo. So I'm trying to decide how many to pull out here. Uh, let's go more expensive. This is the Tuya Big Belly. Um, this one's an integral, carbon fiber integral handle. Um, good looking knife in my opinion. I can't remember the steel on this. I want to say it's M390. Does it say, say somewhere? I cannot remember what the blade steel is. I think it says in there. Can't see it though. Oh. Is it LMAX? What is that? No, it's M390. It is M390. There are some more budget versions of this knife. This one runs about 250, somewhere in that range. But they have a G10 version with 154CM, I think it is. They're about 150. Uh, this one's got great action for crossbar lock. One thing to know about this one, though, is that it's extremely tip-heavy. With that integral carbon fiber handle, um, it's extremely tip-heavy. Like, sit it down, boop, it just wants to fall. But as far as the action goes, pretty good. Not the best pull tabs, though. Kind of slick pull tabs. Um, don't, they don't have a whole lot of grip on them. Pretty slick. It'd be nice if they added some other kind of texture on it to, uh, give you a little better, um, pull. But it sticks out quite a bit, so you, you got enough to get, but it'd be even better with some texture added to it. Uh, Bitchmate has good texture. The Ganzo has good texture. Uh, next up, my newest one. This is the Real Steel Sakura. Now, this one's really good, guys. Really, really, really good. Uh, if you notice, their tabs are smaller than all the other comp companies, right? Uh, the pull tabs. But if you look inside, the size of the, the crossbar itself is the same size. So, this one with smaller pulls, but they did this excellent texturing on it. So, you get lots of traction. It almost sticks to your fingers. Same texturing they did on the thumb studs also. These are K110 still. Uh, they come in micarta and a couple other variations. They will run you about $80 to $90, depending on where you get them and which one you get. Uh, surprise me with this one. Excellent, excellent action. Feels very bug outish. Very bug outish. So if you like the bug out, you will like this one. This feels just like a bug out with newer springs. I mean, it, they did a great job on this thing. This one's actually kind of an integral, also. You know, like this has two liners in there, and this has liners in there. This is like one liner folded in half, so it's all one piece, which also gives it some great sounds. Gives it a different sound, which sounds really good. Very lightweight, too, and uh, fantastic action on this one. First real steel knife I've ever owned, and uh, I like it. I actually won that in a contest on Instagram, so so glad I won it because I love it. It's such a good knife. All right, next up, another newer uh, someone newer to the crossbar lock game. This is the Kershaw Heist. These run about 60 bucks, And uh, this one's on washers. All the rest of these other than the bug out so far have been on bearings. Uh, the bug out's on washers. This is on washers. 
This is another one that feels very reminiscent of a bug out. Um, this is still fairly new. I would say those washers are polished by now, but the pull tabs are very smooth. Again, there's texturing there, but it's not very grippy, but you can get it, but they could definitely do better with the texturing on these. Tell you, Real Steel knocked it out of the park. They have the best filling texturing on the uh, the crossbar lock uh, over all these knives. They definitely have the best filling ones. So this one, uh, you know, these are about 60 bucks. This is one of the cheaper ones on the, on the uh, list, D2 steel also, but man, for Kershaw's first uh, first knives with crossbar lock, they did good. Uh, they also have two other knives that are on bearings that have the crossbar lock. I can't remember the name of those. One of them's the Iridium, and I can't remember the name of the other one, but the Iridium has got rave reviews too, so Kershaw did good with these. Congrats to Kershaw. Keep, keep it up, please. Uh, all right, this one's, mm, this is right there at the top with the action. This is the uh, Kaiser uh, Drop Bear. And this is a crossbar lock, but they've done it differently. They call it a clutch lock. And with the crossbar lock, the spring goes around the tab on each side. And then there's a hole in the liner that you hook the other end in. And that gives you the, t the springiness to it. Well, with this one, they put five holes so you can adjust the tension inside there. Uh, and uh, Really cool. This has fantastic action fantastic action now, this is the premium version these run about 200 bucks they have some less than premium versions but, but why i say less than premium they're aluminum scales and purple thumb studs and they're really nice also those run about 100 bucks so uh great knife uh, this one's 20 cv i think on those uh more budget versions it's 154 cm i'm pretty sure it's 154 cm but yeah fantastic action on this knife uh i ended up it comes with the springs installed in the middle hole there's a total of five holes I've swapped it back and forth in all of them. I prefer it the way it comes out of the box. They got it dialed in perfectly. I did add these thumb studs. It does not come with these thumb studs. It comes with black thumb studs. I put the green titanium ones on there. Yeah, this is a... Uh, I'm excited to see what Kaiser does with the crossbar lock in the future. Or their clutch lock, they call it. Alright, here's another one of my newer ones. This is the CMB Made Knives Predator V2. This is a big boy here. Bigger knife, heavier knife. This one has uh, some stronger springs. You can fill it, but it's still fairly new. It'll break in and get lighter over time. And uh, excellent ergos on this too. This one is uh, 14C 28 end blade still. So their crossbar lock action, it's okay. It's not bad, don't get me wrong, it's not bad. But most all of them are a little bit better than this one. As far as the pull, they, pull tabs, you got a little bit of grip, but as far as the springiness and the action on it, out of all these knives, let me look at the other ones still to come. I think this is probably the one that's at the bottom of the list with the, you know, disengagement, the, sh the springs, basically. They're a little too too strong, in my opinion. Um, they could definitely be better. Actually, I got another one that's worse than this. I, I don't even have it up here, though. I need to grab it. Um, where is it at? Where'd it go? There it is. This is the worst, the worst action I've ever felt on any crossbar lock. It's the knife I'm about to show you. I've tried to break this thing in for weeks. This is the best tech man in Ronin. The worst springs ever. Super strong springs. Like, it's softer now, but when you first get this knife, it's like uncomfortable. You gotta pull so hard. It hurts your, your index finger and your thumb because of how tight they are. I've left this thing sitting like this with tension on the springs for weeks to get it to where it's at now. And uh, it's still not that great. So um, this is one I would not recommend. Uh, if you're considering this one, you'd be better off getting this one. This one's, I said these are strong. They, they don't have anything on this one. This one's on a whole nother level. They, I don't know what they used in there for springs, but it must be like, I don't know, double lat spring wire or something. I don't know. It's very strong, very, uh, not very good action. So, all right, we've got a couple more here. I'm saving the best for last. This one's going to be controversial. I've pulled it out before in these videos. It's not technically a crossbar lock. It's a ball lock. Works just like it, though, with tabs. This one has a coil spring pushing this forward, and there's a ball, a ball bearing in there that locks locks in on top of the blade and locks it up. It comes with a steel bearing. I've added a ceramic bearing in there just to get the weight lighter, and it also uh, makes it sound differently. I'm not going to put this one out here, but 
you know, it's not a crossbar lock, but it functions the exact same way. The uh, Spyderco Manix 2. By the way, this one runs $70, and this one runs like $65. All right, what else we got here? I think this is going to be the last one. The best sounding knife on this list. Probably the best filling action on this list. I'm making sure I didn't forget any real quick. Yeah, yeah. The TRM Shadow. Oh, man, they knocked it out of the park. Listen to the sounds. Oops. It's just so damn smooth. You got texturing on these pull tabs. Feels really comfortable. The action is insanely good on these knives for crossbar lock. So, so, so good. This is the most expensive knife on the list also. These are about $300. These are made in the USA though. So um, the only other one out here made in the USA is the Benchmade Bug Out that's made in the USA. Everything else here is made in China or Thailand. So... Yeah, the bug out, by the way, the standard bug out is like $170, I think. I don't think I gave you that price. But this is the best filling access lock I have ever felt. Uh, you know, bug out's also really good. But it's not as good as that shadow. The drop bear is also really good. It's really good. But it's not better than this. This is just on a different level. Yeah, love this knife, TRM Shadow. These are hard to get. You gotta basically uh, watch for drops and be there the second they drop and type as fast as you can to get your information there to get one of these damn things. But after a year of searching, I finally got one and uh, couldn't be happier about it. Great knife and uh, in my opinion, the best crossbar lock knife out there right now that I have had the experience of having in hand. The best action, the best filling, the smoothest filling, the best sounds. 20 CV blade still. It is G10, but yeah, it is what it is. Uh, my favorite crossbar lock for sure. All right, guys, this video is uh, not really, you know, it's not really about any one knife in particular. It's about my favorite lockup, my favorite locking mechanism. It is the crossbar lock, and this one is the king. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one.